actually he says, who committed this murder. The, uh, no one was ever prosecuted for this murder. Enoch Hooks's murder was never uh, pursued after that. Uh, this whole story was rather swept under the rugs in McMinnville all these many years. The, he was barely mentioned in the history books. Even uh, uh, Mr. Womack in his McMinnville at a Milestone just has one, I think, small sentence about J. Fletch Woodard in his book. And when we published this book in 2001, there were still people in the town who said, oh, I don't think they should have done that. So uh, it's, it's still a controversial story in the town, but we felt that this is a story that needed to be uh, told in McMinnville and one that needed to be remembered because it still is very viable for the town and a very, uh, about a very interesting man who lived here in the early years. He was greatly ahead of his time in many ways, um, at the time that he was doing a lot of his little booklets and mailing them out to subscribers, H.H. H. Faulkner, one of the prominent Faulkner family here, was the postmaster in the town, and he had J. Fletch arrested and jailed for sending certain things through the mail. Well, J. Fletch just, what he did was, uh, contact the Postmaster General in Washington, D.C. about the situation, and he was released immediately from jail. So he was not a man to take it lightly. He wasn't a man who was going to let the people run over him and step on him. It was very interesting that after he was released from jail, he continued to make his home in McMinnville with his family, and he continued to say that he loved his family and loved the town even after he uh, was was imprisoned for three years and he died in the town. Uh, this is a reproduction of an original portrait, a tin type of J. Fletch Woodard and his, and his wife. A very rare image of him that came from the estate of his son who lived in Tracy City when he died. We have the original tin type of that in our museum here. One of the more controversial events of McMinnville was the 1900 triple hanging of three convicted uh, felons in Depot Bottom. And um, it has been reported that this triple hanging, this public hanging, that people attended from all over Middle Tennessee and from wide around. They came by wagon, by horse. They came in droves from all over the counties, all around Warren County. They got here any way they could get here for this hanging that was highly publicized at the time. Uh, it was performed on um, April the 25th, 1900. And the day after it was performed, uh, the Warren County News newspaper here published six images of the hanging. I, no, excuse me. The Warren County News in um, the... Um, New Era newspaper, the day after the hanging, published a long story of the event of the hanging. Well, we think that J. Fletch Woodard may have made a series of photographs of the hanging. They have not officially been ascribed to him, but in uh, 1979, April 25th, 1979, uh, the Warren County News published what was six, the whole set of images of this hanging that, that were found by a Judge Walter Griswold in a trunk in a public uh, um, auction. And uh, they look very much like other pictures that had been taken by Woodard, and we think they could have well been taken by Woodard. But uh, the McMinnville paper published in 1979, the complete um, story as it appeared on April 26th, 1900, in the New Era newspaper here. 
uh, we have in our book on page uh, 32, we have two of the images that are from this series. And this is one of the images showing the men having been dropped through the, to the bottom of the platform and hanging by their necks. On page 32, we have two of the images of six that are extant about this hanging. We even have a story that was brought to us recently of a couple who married after they met at this hanging and had a large family. Uh, one of the, the, the woman came from Van Buren County down to see the hanging or to try to see the hanging and the man lived here in Warren County and they met at the hanging and they married and they had a numerous children and uh, that's, a, that's a little side story about the hanging but that's one of the more interesting um, events of the past 200 years. Uh, one of the interesting things that we have is uh, this wedding photo taken by William Spencer Lively of James Monroe and Mary Steakley Cunningham who uh, it was made in 1890. Uh, Mary Cunningham uh, figured prominently in Warren County uh, literary circles here. She organized the first early library here in McMinnville and a little later on became the custodian of the Magnus Memorial Library and a close friend and confidant of uh, William Magnus who uh, uh, gave the money for the building and uh, also had an apartment in the, uh, the library at the time it was built. But Mrs. Cunningham was a historian, a, 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 a great um, Warren County citizen and a highly respected and loved person. This is a very rare photograph uh, as I said, of her husband, James Monroe Cunningham and Mary Cunningham, Mary Steakley. She was born in um, 1869 in White County, but came to live in Warren County a little later on. In our chapter in the book uh, titled McMinnville, we have this photograph, which was among those images that we got when we purchased the Charles Steamboat Cassidy collection it's an image of the burning of the Central High School on Chancery Street in 1974. We have a series of images that uh, Steamboat Cassidy took while the school was burning. Um, it, is a, it is a major event for the McMinnville uh, school system and the area, uh, and uh, uh, it's a more int one of the more interesting photographs in our book of a more contemporary nature. Uh, in our final chapter in the book, which is called the Southern School of Photography, we have an extensive uh, number of photographs, um, most of them really rare and have never been published before, uh, relating to William Lively and his um, famous uh, portraits and his history uh, making project of the Southern School of Photography, which he opened here in McMinnville in 1904 and after the school caught on fire and burned the West Wing in 1928, the school uh, was closed after that. The Livelys continued to live in the uh, West Wing of the beautiful big building down on the hill uh, beside the First Baptist Church here in McMinnville until he died in 1941. But one of the rare images in this chapter is an original portrait that we own and have in our museum here. It's um, at the time that we did the book and got the images in the book, at the time we sent the images to the publisher, we did not know who this man was. We had never seen his name or anything, but we have since uh, found out that he was Jack Green, G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. And he is the subject of many of Mr. Lively's early 1900 photographs. This one is signed by Mr. Lively in white ink in 1903, and it has the title, um, Gone Am De Days, which is in the vernacular of the black community at the time. This uh, apparently is a black man. Um, Mr. Lively liked to photograph old men with long hair. He had often asked 
uh, his friend uh, William Meadows, the, 